Welcome to Alternative Assessment Techniques. I'm Dr. Dina Kurzweil, and with me today is Dr. Linda McCulley. These are our goals for today, if you could take a look at those. All of the work we're doing today is based on a book done by Angelo and Cross here called Classroom Assessment Techniques. Um, it's been around for a while. The original book came out in 1998. This background knowledge uh, classroom assessment technique is a short, simple questionnaire. It's given to students at the start of a course or maybe before the introduction of a new unit or of a lesson or topic so that you can uncover students' preconceptions or background knowledge on a particular topic. So since we do have a good number of folks that are um, learning about CATS for the first time or are less familiar with it, we do want to make sure we give that background information about what uh, CATS are. So uh, classroom assessment techniques, or CATS, fall into four broad categories, and you can see them here on, on our slide. And each of the CATS that you choose typically are used for particular purposes, and those purposes are here, course-related knowledge and skills, student attitudes, values, and self-awareness, reactions to instruction methods, or to reduce isolation and engage collaboration. Whether you use CATS as activities or assessment, um, it will help you and your students get the feedback that you need on the teaching and learning process as it's happening. So you can think of you know, assessment in multiple ways, right? We talked a little bit in the, in the background probe that assessment can be used for summative purposes, which is assessment of learning. We can do assessment for learning, which is more formative. And we can do assessment as learning, where assessment itself becomes the learning event. So one of the things about CATS is really cool is you can use them for all of that. Right, They're quick classroom assessment techniques that can help you know what your students know, provide that immediate feedback so you can inform your instruction right there and then in that moment, but it also allows your students to learn from the process itself. So it's not just busy work, it's actually a chance for them to know and engage in what they understand or don't understand of what you're currently teaching. So classroom assessment techniques also provide us some important information, not just to us, but to our students, okay? So you're going to be able to really think about um, the progress that your students are making, and you're going to be able to deal with those and preempt those kind of preconceptions, and poor performance issues by going in and doing this. I uh, literally had um, a colleague who did classroom assessment techniques um, basically at the start of every class. She did one to get a sense of how the students actually took in the reading assignments uh, that were supposed to be done um, before the start of each class. And so it's going to give you that insight of that day-to-day -day teaching and learning progress, okay, and process. So it kind of held two really important aspects for the learners. First of all, you know, we tend to worry, are our students doing the reading? Did they do the assignment? Well, once they start to recognize that, hey, and you know, you can say this completely, you know, to your students, hey, I'm gonna be doing this at the beginning of every class. We're gonna, you know, do a quick classroom assessment technique. We're gonna do this little thing here, this activity. Um, just to see, so I know what was confusing, what you didn't get, you know, to help me teach you better. And so the students start to realize, oh, I guess I have to do the reading and assignments before class because they're going to know if I don't. Um, and so it really does help you do that. It also helps the students feel less anonymous in these large classroom settings. You know, if you're dealing with having hundreds of students, it is not a there are ways to do use different classroom assessment techniques where it is not going to be an onus on you to go in and look at this information. Um, it also models to the students the fact that learning is ongoing and an evolving process that can be modified as needed. 
or instructors can reflect on their teaching and learning and provide that food for thought. So there are lots of ways that classroom assessment techniques can really help us think about what we're doing and how we're doing it. So again, just hitting some of these points that Linda and I both uh, have already hit here, but it really, cat, the classroom assessment, assessment techniques or CATS as they're called, is an approach designed to help teachers find out what students are learning in the classroom and how well they're learning it. Okay, it really helps them focus on the students and their improvement in learning rather than just observing, and it also helps improve teaching. Um, you want to really think about the specific context for what you're doing, and classroom assessment techniques help you um, hone in on that. One of the other nice things about classroom assessment techniques is the teacher, the faculty member, isn't obligated to share the results of those with anybody outside of the classroom. Okay, They're, they don't have to share them with the students. They don't have to share them with their leadership. These are very informal. And the last thing I want to say about this is that, remember, this is a very active piece. So instead of having students being very passive in their learning, and in their participation in class, you're doing something very active, which then increases motivation um, and provides more investment into the learner's success. So some classroom assessment techniques assumptions that I want you to uh, think about. Um, when we think about these, we want to realize that this is about teaching positively and teaching positively impacts learning directly. You also want to realize that what you're trying to do in your assessment using the CATS really should be explicit and maps to the goals and objectives of the course so that you have a direct alignment with what you're trying to look at and what the students need to do. It also, next bullet, allows you to focus timely feedback and provide that positive impact to the student or that necessary support right off the bat. A lot of times when we're doing classroom assessment techniques, and there's a whole variety of them, so don't worry, we're going to get to those. Um, assessment questions matter and assessment concerns matter, so you're going to be able to find out those problems in real time. As you engage the students into thinking about their learning, this idea of inquiry and intellectual challenge can be very powerful sources of motivation. If the students are getting questions right off the bat that they don't know, they're going to have that internal motivation to start thinking about, well, why didn't I know that? And how come I'm doing this? And why am I not getting this? So a cat can really help the student think about and challenge them in terms of their learning. One of the things I love about a cat is there's no training required. Um, it's, it's a really easy thing to do. And finally, again, once again, we are trying to actively involve students to really raise their um, participation in the learning process. So some questions to think about as you are looking at doing a CAT. So the first question you can see here is, is it going to provide me the information about what the students are learning? Is that something that I need, that I want? So alterable variables, it's a really interesting um, piece here, are instructional, instructional, curricular, or behavioral strategies within an educator's control that, when changed, lead to measurable improvements in student engagement and performance. And for those of that you are familiar with Bloom's taxonomy, that's straight out of Bloom's. It's a direct quote from Bloom's back in 1980. So you want to think about what are those things that you have in your control to change to lead to those performance improvements. Remember, as Linda was talking, we had you do right off the bat that background knowledge probe. And then there was probably a good minute and a half, two minutes where we looked at those results. That time and looking at those results can provide you and your learners information so that you can make mid-course corrections. If everybody had responded that they knew about CATS, we probably wouldn't be going into the background as much today, and we probably would have just, into, jump, just jumped into the techniques. And then finally, it does take a few minutes. Sometimes it's more, depending on the CAT that you choose, to prepare and use them, but they're usually very quick, very easy to do and review.
So now we're going to try another uh, classroom assessment technique. Now that we've reviewed the background of what uh, cats are, we want to uh, introduce another example of a cat. And this one, the muddiest point, is often considered like the simplest cat to use to help assess where students are having difficulties. It consists of asking students to just jot down a quick response to one question. What was the muddiest point in the, whatever, the lecture, the discussion, the homework assignment, the film, the, the whatever you're doing. Um, and in this case, the term muddiest means the most unclear or most confusing. So take a moment and actually um, think about, after what we've talked about so far, what is the muddiest point for uh, you? So let's go on to the next cat here. And that this is the everyday ethical dilemma. So as you can see, this is something that you're going to be sending out to your students to respond to, to really look at their awareness of their attitudes and values. Um, students respond briefly to, let's say, a case that you put together that poses a discipline-specific ethical dilemma related to the profession or ideas that they're studying. So for GSN, let's say you are dealing with the ideas of death and dying, you probably want to have maybe an everyday ethical dilemma based on a case study that you have on the topic and have the students think through and gain awareness of their attitudes and values. And this helps you also understand where they're sitting with the content and the knowledge and how they're taking that in. So the, the everyday ethical dilemma is a great way to look at kind of how your students um, are progressing in terms of their awareness of those other side of the skills, those other types of effective objectives dealing with attitudes and values. So we've done a lot of talking and, and we mentioned that there are tons of classroom assessment techniques that you can choose from. And if we just lectured one after the other on, on each of the techniques, um, you probably wouldn't remember most of them anyway, because active learning is always better uh, in this instance. So what we want you to do is actually get uh, deep into the options that are available. And there's a fantastic resource uh, that we have here for you um, that is from one of the authors that actually wrote the book. Um, and we're going to have you spend some time uh, independently. First, take some time to reflect. Think about an area where you would like more information on your students' learning status. So think about a particular topic or lecture or course that you would like to consider using CATS. And take some time, about 15 minutes, to review the list and the brief descriptions of the many cats that are available there on that website. And then take another 15 minutes to actually choose one that you wanna uh, implement and begin developing your plans for how you're going to use it. So choose one and dig deep, figure out how it works, what it's all about and how you might uh, end up using that particular cat in your own teaching. Um, we would recommend that you take a few minutes to reflect on today's session and think about what was the most important thing that you learned during the class. And if you do have important questions that remain unanswered, you know that you can always uh, reach out to us um, at our ETI uh, at USA.edu email address uh, for additional consultation or conversation about this topic. These are the references for our presentation today. Remember the link we gave you to the Cross and Angela book is from 1998. So there are updated versions that you can purchase um, with more in-depth and the site that we gave you the link to, please keep that um, because that is KP Cross's site, uh, one of the authors of the book. And so a lot of the resources are free out there. Remember, these cats are not supposed to be difficult or onerous on you. They're supposed to give you a leg up. They're supposed to give your students a leg up. 
So really consider, you know, taking a nice easy one and slowly working your way into other ones. Find one that you think would be particularly appropriate for you, your students, and your time, and slowly start working your way through those cats. See what works for you, see what doesn't. Some of them are going to be great and spot on, and some of you are going to be like, eh, I really didn't get what I wanted out of it. Again, we're here if you need us. Um, I want to thank you. Thank uh, Dr. Hamlin for inviting us to present on this topic. And we hope everybody has a beautiful spring day today. Thank you for watching today's Teaching with Technology Brownback session. You can view all Teaching with Technology Brownbacks on the USU YouTube channel under the full ETI playlist. Have a nice day.